I don't know how many of you guys, just like me, since AI become a main topic of people's daily life, you start diving into learning AI or even program and are scared to be left over by the age. However, when there is an update from OpenAI, whatever you just learned becomes almost useless. And this phenomenon is especially predominant in the developer community when they just design an app or add up specifically to GPT 3.5, suddenly they publish GPT 4. Two months ago, OpenAI published their new AI to make video, Sora. And for me, who been learning how to make videos or even editing videos, suddenly my skill seems like about to be outdated. And it make me wonder that one question, what is even worth learning in the AI age? Or what kind of people can even survive under the AI revolutions? This question is nothing new. Even before the AI revolution, it exists. Imagine if you're a professor who teach uh, marketing from 1995 to today, you will teach all sorts of things. How in the beginning you may teach advertisement on TV, then you have to learn about internet, big data, psychology, or even until today, AI. How can we use AI to benefit market? Every five years, whatever you teach is going to be different. Imagine the student who paid the money to learn those skills. When they out of the college, they realize their skill is no longer valuable because the technology revolutions. And after today's video, you will have a pretty good idea what sort of people can adapt to the age, not just limited into the AI revolution that just happening. And I want to use Sora as an example, as a lead to demonstrate who can even survive. When the publish of Sora, everybody thought, oh my God, they're gonna replace all the YouTubers or they even destroy Hollywood. And that let's see who will actually be replaced by Sora. There's two type of people. First type of people is people who understand high level technical skills can make videos. Second type of people is the people who understand how to write a good story. Me as a person who been making videos, it's very obvious the second type of people will survive. If Imagine you give Sora to a professional boom mic holder and a professional movie producer. It's very obvious that the movie producer can easily utilize Sora way better. However, why why just pose a question? We kind of have a hesitate for a couple seconds. Or even more, for example, like me sometime before. I even dive in to learn this high technical skill. I go learn about AI, I go learn about programming. What went wrong? When I dig down to myself, I realized the reason why I started learning AI or programming is because one thought that I hold, and I believe lots of people is holding, is that thinking or idea is very easy. The execution is hard. People thinking, oh, just Spider-Man, Batman, or whatever movie you can think of. To come up with that crazy idea, so simple. But, you know, to film it, actor, lighting, editing, is difficult. So, if AI can solve the executions, and idea is easy, then we can earn a boatload of money, right? And that, that idea is why there's so many people, um, regardless of the platform, making video like this. This is how you earn a 10K a month with AI and there's zero effort you need, zero skill you need. You can use whatever painting AI to make child book. You can use uh, AI to trade your stock. You can use AI even to do a consulting company. But after the first almost wave of AI, those people is nowhere to see. Even more straight, if you go check those people's company, go see their tax receipt that gave to the RRS or whatever a taxing department, you will realize most of their money is earned through selling you the course instead of whatever they're trading the stock with AI. Or even one of the most popular topic on the internet is people want to talk about how to become a, a prompt engineer. Right, you put a couple of words that give you the code and you can build an app, you can become a programmer by not knowing any programmer languages. But now you look, 
prompting is almost become a replacement for programmer who actually doing programmer work. Instead, they search Google on GitHub, but they just ask ChatGPT now. And you can see the programmers are the one who have the idea, or even till one day, imagine programmer all get replaced by AI, and there's no programmer no more. They also don't need you to become prompt engineer. They can prompt themselves as a CEO, as a boss, because they have the idea. Just like in the beginning, when computer just enter people's house, sometimes people hire a person to type the keyboard because they don't know how to do. But nowadays, it sounds bizarre if you hire someone to your house to type on the keyboard because you do not know how to type on the keyboard. In future, if prompting can really replace programmer, the same situation will happen. No one will hire a typist because we don't need such a job. Even then, you said, "Oh, maybe you saw her one day can actually replace all the programmer. They make a good enough movies that I don't really need my idea." The sad thing is, because your limitation of understanding of videos or film in general, even then they may make one of the best movie ever, but you will lack the eye and the aesthetic to even recognize that's a good enough videos. You will. You do not even know what's good. Just like if I don't speak、uh, English, it's difficult for me to recognize which sentence in English are beautiful written. So now we loop back. We suddenly realize, yes, execution is hard, but what's even harder is the idea, is the thought behind it, is the person who want to make something. That sort of explain our second question: What kind of people can survive? The answer is thinkers, instead the doers. In fact, most people when they grow up, they never practice to imagine, to think about ideas. We all be educated by executions. For example, when you enter the first grade, second grade, you learning math. You hundred percent have this question: What the heck? I need to learn math. You may ask your teacher. You may ask your dad. All they tell you is, "Shut up, just do it." What are you doing? Is learning how to execute without an idea, without a thinking, without even a brain participate. Even more, what can it demonstrate that we never even learn how to come up idea is in school. I used to have this issue when I was first grade, second grade, when teacher taught us a question that no one know about it. Teacher will ask, tell you, "Oh, think." Think hard, come up with the idea, but it just leave me confused. I'm sitting there, I listen to my teacher, he tell me to think, but he didn't tell me how to. How to think? What am I supposed to just sitting here and wait the time out? And how to become a person with a good idea? Probably is another topic that will film in future. And then let's loop it back. So is that mean the person? Execute will be out of business, out of labor market forever. The answer is no, but it really depends on what kind of execution you done. Recently, there is a meeting was hold in AI, and there is an interview was conducted with Benjio. He is almost like Freud in psychology. He is one of the founding father of AI, and he also the person who suggests Idia. The chief scientist of OpenAI to OpenAI. In another term, without his suggestion, OpenAI will never get to where they are. About Ilya's story and Benjio's story, I make a two separate video. You can go check it out. But he basically saying this: AI, as it is deployed in more and more applications,、mm -hmm. is very likely to change the the job market. So maybe the most important skill is. General knowledge and adaptability, and ability to learn quickly new things.、Mm -hmm. uh, it's if they are very specialized in one thing, then it's going to be more difficult for them. If you're the viewer of this channel, you will know I've been promoting this idea since almost a years ago, since in the beginning of GPT 3.5, and of course, and I find it necessary to explain why that is important. Some people may say, "Yeah, you know this field a little bit. You know that field a little bit."、Uh, all in all, you're not expert. You're a noob on everything. You seems that、like、you know everything, but 
do not know anything at the same time. However, even until today, that is very important to know a bit of every subject. For example, me, right? If I only know how to write a script, it wouldn't make me a success of a YouTuber. I do not know how to edit. I do not know lighting. I do not know sound. It's a very difficult path for me. Only until one day I know a little bit of everything, I can coordinate them together to deliver a good enough product. And then let me use another metaphor for you to understand how important to know a bit of everything. In science, the most famous scientist is almost be put in two categories. One type of category called theoreticals. There are the people in mentioned earlier, they have a thought, they have an idea, they think about black hole universe, they think about uh, molecules and nano material structures. Another group famous category is called application scientist. There are the people who make a theory into reality. You think about the structure of nano, okay, I use nano material to make something that benefit everybody's life into uh, agriculture, into uh, constructions. But it required them to have a knowledge of every single thing. They need to have enough skill to tell the manufacturer what they wanted, how could it set up. They need to have enough skill to talk to the technicians. But imagine if you are the technician in a nanomaterial company, your job is manufacture the material. If there is a new machine, you will be out of the business, out of the labor market. However, those coordinator application scientists will never be replaced. Then I understand some people still have question. Okay, what if one day we don't need application scientists? We don't need the coordinator. We don't need the executor who know every bit of knowledge from every bit of subject. What's going to happen? The answer is that's, in my opinion, the AGI to our society. And there will be a major shift in our society. And that's beyond your worries. At that moment, it's not even a nation's concern. That will be a global concern. And that will be all for today's video. I really hope you learned something today. And my name is Paul. I will see you next time. Bye.